Hey, this is John Chandler with Machine Tools Rebuilt, and I, I'm going to start making videos to try to explain to people why you should buy machines from me. So a lot of people wonder why my machines are priced a little higher, if they even are. And so we're going to start with the Bridgeport. Uh, this machine represents something that's a little worse for wear that comes in. Typically you can find these machines for anywhere from $2,000, $4,000. The reason I picked this one specifically is because it's a later model. Now in 1983, 1984, they changed the model of these machines. They put a double gib lock on the front, if you can see here. And then they have a double gib lock down on the side on the knee. Also, there's a plastic bridge port tag here as opposed to the one that's cast into the ram. Now you gotta be careful when looking for a late model bridge port because sometimes people will scab them together and you'll see a double gib lock, but there's a different ram on it with the casting. You don't want that. You want something that's original. Or maybe they might put a different knee on it uh, with a saddle with the double gib lock. Or you might see the plastic ram tag, you get the idea. So anyway, um, this particular one is a 48 inch machine. Um, I paid $3,500 for it. When I go to list it, I'm probably going to list it for about $8,500 to $9,000. So this series of videos, uh, well, compiled into one video, hopefully that'll work, um, is going to explain why the price is higher and what I do to a, quote, service machine. Because you guys see that word service a lot on my ads. So we'll get started, and uh, we're going to take it a little bit at a time, and hopefully this video makes sense. Look at this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to address the head. We're going to rip this sucker apart. Right away, you can see that it's super dirty. Um, there's a little bit of rust on it here and there. Somebody, oh, somewhere along the line, somebody put a one and a half horsepower motor on this two horse 2J head. Um, and that shouldn't be. The one and a half horse motor was a flop. You should never buy a one and a half horse variable speed unless your budget doesn't allow a two horse. The motor armature is real small and the, uh, the timing belt pulley is weird. Some of the older ones, the lifter on the uh, variable speed pulley only has one screw hole. It was just a bad design. I didn't use it for a while. So the two horsepower variable speed is what you want. So we're going to go ahead and rip this apart. I haven't figured out how to do time lapse videos yet. So um, I'm just going to tear it all apart and then show it to you on the bench. And then as we go back together, I'll do some more videos. And yes, I am wearing sandals right now, but I will change to something more safe, a closed toed shoe here in just a moment. So you'll notice that change too. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so we have the head all apart. I have it down here on the bench. Typically what I do, if you're gonna tackle this yourself, is I, as I strip the head, I put all the parts in a pan, all the small stuff, and then uh, I take it apart in chunks. And then what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll service each piece. And as I service it, I reinstall it. So uh, the first step is, is to take the head, strip the head all the way down, and then I clean the machine um, down to the turret, down to here. And then once this part is all cleaned, uh, then I start with the lower housing. I service the lower housing and then I go on with uh, With the upper housing I service it piece by piece and stack it as I go and then obviously we're gonna have to replace that motor With a two horse. So uh, as I start to put it back together We'll uh, we'll continue to take pictures and videos. You can see uh, this machine I actually bought out of California from a dealer and it was in fully functional condition is what um, is what was advertised and so when you go to buy a machine you know you, you never know what you're gonna get I mean the spindle I'm not sure if you can hear it but you can't even really actually turn it it's uh, it's full of water um, obviously you can see you can see in the quill housing um, water got into the quill housing on the other side you can see all the rust around here so th this head needs just totally rebuilt which is a bummer because I spent um, I spent $3,500 on it and then 500 for shipping. So I'll have 4,000 into it just to get it on my floor. Now, the reason that I spent so much again is because it's a double, double good block, the later model, um, serial number two, seven. So it's like late eighties, early nineties. And the ways are in decent shape. Um, you can s still see, uh, the flaking and it's got the 48 inch table that's in decent shape. So I think I'll do okay. But, uh, at the end of the video, I'll explain how I price things. It's not just, uh, um, just a random swing, but I, I price them according to what I have into them and, and a margin that I need to hit. So, and what the market will bear, obviously. 
All right, so we're gonna get started with this head, and uh, as I do it, I'll either do pictures or, um, or little video segments or maybe a little bit of both. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so just a couple quick notes. Um, again, with a service job, uh, starting here from the top, I back all the nuts off, make sure that everything is functional um, as far as the turret, the ram extension. This gear here always gets loose. These two socket head cap screws right here get loose. And if this gets loose enough, what'll happen is um, this gear is for tramming your head side to side and it'll shear these screws off. And then you're really in a predicament because you can't tram your head. So this gets tightened up and uh, new signage and all that, everything will get lubricated. And then we're just about ready to reinstall the lower housing. So uh, I'll take some pictures and video of that as we go on. Okay, so the lower housing is all cleaned up as is everything above the turret. Um, wanted to show you real quick the spindle. This is the so-called fully functional machine that I bought from a dealer. Um, this spindle's full of water. So obviously, the term functional, um, I don't know. I guess each person has their own definition of it, but this to me is not functional. So we're gonna address this. Okay, so we got the spindle in. Uh, spindle's all rebuilt and in. Uh, I just wanted to show you one quick thing. So it gets a felt wiper um, in the top there and the oil drips onto this felt wiper it screws down like so. Now the problem is, and this has only happened once to me, but the problem is, is that this is glued onto this ring. It's not fastened any other way. And one time I shipped a machine out and this felt wiper got sucked down into the spindle. And so a little trick that I do is I take the old ring, take the felt wiper off of it, and I put it on the top of the quill first and then I take the new one and I put it on second. And what that does is it sandwiches the felt between the two rings and prevents that from ever happening again. Cause I ended up having to have the head shipped back to me. It cost me a bunch of money to fix it under warranty. So anyway, little things like that. Okay, so sorry about the noise in the background, but we uh, got the lower housing all finished and trimmed up. Um, the I forgot to take a video and picture, but the transmission housing the, the plate comes off, all the grease gets taken out, gets packed with new grease. And in this case, there was some problems with the high-low handle. I had to replace some parts. Um, it has a new brake shoe set and new brake springs because those have a tendency to break. No pun intended. And uh, now we got bushings and keys in the upper end, a new belt, and we're going to go up from there. Okay, just got finished with the head. Everything runs well. We're going to move on to the base. Uh, we did the, the bushings, the keys, the belt, the brake, I think I mentioned before. A couple of bearings in the upper end. Put that different two-horse motor on it. I think I'm going to change the motor bearings because the motor makes a little bit of noise, but nothing extreme, nothing anybody would notice, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, time for the base. So I'm going to take the table off. I'm going to take the saddle off. I'm going to take the knee plates off and blow the inside of the knee out. Um, I do not remove, on a service job, I do not remove the knee from the column. That stays assembled. It just gets cleaned up. And again, this is a service job. This is not a rebuild. So this is just what every machine gets when it's uh, serviced here at Machine Tools Rebuild. So anyway, stay tuned. I'll take more pictures of it uh, as I disassemble it and reassemble it. Okay, here we are, day two, and uh, we have the base all stripped down, all the parts laid out, ready to get started, finish cleaning uh, the base, blow out and clean the inside of the knee, and then we'll clean the parts one at a time as they go back together. Okay, so the ways are all cleaned up. There's a little bit of wear, but they're in good shape. There's less than a half thousandth wear between uh, half inch pins when I measure it across them from the outsides to the inside. So 
you're not going to notice that in your part at all. On the service jobs, I do not con I do not completely clean this cavity out. I blow all the chips out, I scrape them all out as best I can from the top, and I make sure the gear assembly is free from chips. But other than that, um, there's still some remnants of chips in there. Now on the rebuild jobs, this the, the whole knee comes off, it gets completely cleaned out, and I actually even paint the inside of the castings, but not on the service jobs. Okay, so as I get started reassembling, um, first I got the um, wiper cover goes on first, then you clean these plates up, plates go on, make sure the bevel is proper. Um, otherwise, you got to take the whole stupid thing apart again to, uh, to flip these over. So make sure the bevel tapers down towards the machine if you're doing it yourself. Anyway, um, oil penetration is huge. So these are, these are limiters on the bottom of the Bridgeport saddle. And just because something, just because the axes move and it seems like the oil's pumping when you pull up on the handle doesn't mean that it is. So, um, to check and make sure that all these limiters are working, what I do is, is I pull the, uh, when I pull the saddle off, I put air to, um, to the inlet here and blow it. And I wait until, usually it takes about 30 seconds, I wait until all of the ports are blowing bubbles with oil. And not only does that move all of the dirty oil out, um, but it also ensures that the limiters aren't clogged up, which a lot of the times they are. So another thing you get when, uh, when you buy a machine that's serviced from Machine Tools Rebuilt. Really trying to take the time to make sure that the quality is high enough to where you're not gonna have to mess around with something after you buy it. You can just get one of these machines and go right into work without worrying about it. Now we have the saddle on. I just assembled the Y axis. Let's talk about backlash a little bit. So on the screws and nuts on a service job, a lot of people say how much backlash is in a machine. So what I've done is, is um, standardizing uh, a machine service by calling it something specific. In this case, again, I use the word a lot, but a serviced machine from Machine Tools Rebuilt, it has a certain standard. So basically, if the machine has full smooth travels without getting tight on either end, and I can maintain less than eight thousandths backlash in the middle, it does not get new screws. If it's more than eight thousandths in the middle, um, like if it's if it's ten or twelve thousandths in the middle, and even if it's smooth on the outsides, um, how, and how much more so if it's tight on the outsides? But if there's more than ten to twelve, or more than eight rather, um, if it gets up into 10, 12, 15, I replace the screws and nuts. A lot of the times the nuts do need replaced. In this case, they didn't. They were in really good shape on the y-axis, and we have about three thousandths, three to four thousandths backlash in the uh, in the Y, nice smooth full travel. Now on the X, you can see uh, this screw is, is trashed. So it the land is pretty good on the outsides, but when we get towards the inside, look at that. There's no more land. So you'd probably have about 25 or 30 thousandths backlash. I'm not even gonna check it. Uh, I just, I ordered a new screw. And if it gets a new screw, it gets a new nut. So on a serviced machine, a service bridge port from Machine Tools Rebuilt, you're gonna have less than eight thousandths backlash in either direction. We have the table and power feed on now, reinstalled the digital readout, got everything adjusted. Now I have the old screw in it right now because I had to order a new screw from High Quality Tool in Ohio is where uh, parts come from. I highly suggest getting parts from there. They're a really great group of people. But um, I have a punch list. So usually what I'll do is, is I'll finish the machine up and then anything I notice as I go, uh, I write down. So we still need to install the quill cap screw in the bottom of the spindle. Um, I noticed that the oiler was leaking a little bit and so I tightened it and the fitting was cracked on both sides. So I got a new fitting coming um, from a gentleman I do business with in Connecticut. And then uh, you can see here the X screw still coming in, RPM dial. There was a little bit of there was a little bit of galding on the RPM dial, so I'm going to put a new one of those on. And then I did decide I'm going to do motor bearings, so I'm going to take the motor back off, put new motor bearings in it. 
but once I complete those things, the machine will be completely finished. Um, you can see I cleaned the base up as best I could. The paint's a little rough, a little bit rougher on this machine than some other ones. The power feed, um, I replaced the potentiometer. I put new brushes in it, put new boots on the switches, and um, I replaced a couple of parts internally, some detent parts, and then also filled it up with oil, drained the oil and filled it up with new oil. So it's working really well. Digital readout, I did nothing to. All I did was clean it. Use digital readouts on these service jobs are not warrantied. Everything else is warrantied for six months um, for failing parts except the electronics. So the motor is not under warranty. The switch is not under warranty. The used digital readout is not under warranty and the power feed is not under warranty. However, everything else, all the mechanical assemblies and parts are. So if anything fails within six months, as far as parts go, uh, we'll send you free parts. That does not include labor. However, if you can get the machine or the machine component to me at my shop, then it does include labor. If the digital readout fails, um, although it's not under warranty, I do sell Ditron or Fagor at cost. So if you do have a used digital readout and it fails, you get one at my cost. And then uh, power feeds, you uh, same thing at cost. Motor, same thing at cost. So any electronics that fail, you get at cost, but they're not covered um, completely under the, under the six month parts warranty. Almost done. Next video will be completely finished and testing. All right, it's all done. Screw came in, did the motor bearings like I mentioned I was going to. And there was one other thing in the transmission housing. When I'd run it in back gear, I could hear one of the teeth clicking and, and uh, it bothered me. And so um, it was really, really subtle, but I knew that there was a chip stuck in there in the grease. So I took it all back apart, cleaned the new grease that I had put in there out, um, found the chip stuck to the gear tooth, cleaned both, took both gears out, cleaned both gears out again, and then put it all back together. And now it's, now it's, uh, nice and smooth so I'm very happy with it turned out really nice I'm getting ready to list it if you're watching this video it's probably already sold because it's gonna take me forever to edit this and put it together so um, anyway run it in the right direction the draw bars in the top so it's making a little bit of a noise because I don't have a collet in it but you get the idea. Then here's the nice smooth back gear. I'm so glad I took it back apart. And with tension on it, it sounds just like it should. And the power feed, either direction runs great. Those are neat units. I, I personally don't really like the Bridgeport power feed um, just because it's really elaborate electronically. Um, lots of parts in it, but a lot of guys like them, so whatever. New X screw. Got that installed. The, old, the good old mill mate. I'm sure a lot of you guys are used to those digital readouts. Been around for a long time. So that's the service job. Now, uh, I've had people on Facebook, you know, Facebook is notorious for um, comments. And uh, I've had some knuckleheads say things like, uh, one guy, <laughs> one guy introduced himself to me by saying, I hear you sell junk machines. And uh, I thought, wow, well, that's a brazen comment. But um, we can see that's actually what promoted that's what prompted me to do this video is because I wanted people to see what they're paying for and to the extent to which I go to to make sure everything is functional. Um, you usually don't find this elsewhere and if you did they would probably call it a rebuild and they would like brush paint some sort of like house paint on it and then uh, and sell it for the same price but I highly doubt that there's anybody around that's that's pouring themselves into machines like this and making sure that no corners are cut, especially for the price point. Um, I've gone through, I go through about two bridge ports a week and uh, I've been doing it for 10 years. So that's quite a few bridge ports that I've had my hands on. Now lately I've been 
I've been uh, dealing with some medical issues, so I've been a little slower than usual, but, but for the last 10 years, I've been cranking these machines out. I'm not good at a whole lot, but when it comes to bridge ports and LeBlancs, I know what I'm doing. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, contact me, machinetoolsrebuilt.com. John, J-O-N, at machinetoolsrebuilt.com is my email. And uh, you can get a hold of me if you want to have your machine serviced in the same fashion, or if you're interested in a machine, or if you want to talk about rebuilds, we can do that too. Regrinding and scraping, we do that here in-house. Um, lathe beds up to 200 inches, we have sent out to every ground. We scrape them in when they come back. Looking forward to hearing from you. Hope you enjoyed the video.